Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. I hope each and every single one of you had a very happy new year. Happy 2023. I cannot believe it's 2023, January 4th of 2023. I am one month away from my 40th birthday, and I cannot believe that I am almost 40 years old. But anyway, I hope you guys once again had a very happy holiday season. Today in, in our study of the return of the Divine Sophia, very appropriately with the start of the new year, we are starting with the section three in this book called The Return. This section starts on my book on page 391. And before we get started, as always, because we know that the dark ones do not want us talking about this stuff, um, I'm going to ask for Michael, Gabriel, and all of the beings of the highest light that are here for our highest good and our highest protection to come into this reading with me to help me say the words that need to be said and to guard the reading, guard the equipment, guard the recording, guard the camera. If there are any beings here, human or otherwise, that are not here for our highest good, who are here to infiltrate, to try to stop this information from getting, from getting out, I ask that Michael and Gabriel please remove those beings now. I want to make it very clear that I do not consent to any beings, nefarious beings being around me in my home, in my recording. I do not consent. You do not have my permission to be here. And I revoke any permission that you think you have by my own wounds or by my own shadow side. My shadow side is a very holy side that I use to work on myself. And you have no right, no permission to use that to be anywhere around me or around this recording. All right, with that being said, let's get started on part three, the return. Ye now that I should stand before myself and whisper these words to you again, great goddess. Oh, great and mighty, you are within me. You are me. I am you. And I see myself in you. You are the heart of creation. And I am the arrow that flies true and swift to the center mark. I hear your voice. I feel your presence your sweet divine presence all around me. How can I not serve if that is what you have asked of me? How can I turn away from the face of the divine? I cannot. And so I bend my knees to you. And in that releasing of myself, I become you. I am exalted in you. You move through me and around me. You vibrate the very essence of my molecules. I breathe you, I embrace you. And in every issue of every particle moving through the space, you embrace me. As we approach the door of the abyss of light, there is only one way to enter. With our eyes open. With our hearts open. As animations of the Divine Mother. Animations of ourselves. With dignity and nobility and the acknowledgement of all good upon this planet and every other planet that we are each joined to the thread of life the red thread of the grandmother spider let us spin it out now let us travel to the rivers of time and space that leads us to ourselves trisha mccannon chapter 20 calling down the goddess mother god of all gods avatars and saints the child is artish who craves to touch your shape even the evil ones Crushed in your inscrutable heart, why Sophia, Shekinah, hear my prayer. Janine Cannon, she rises like the sun. I returned to the circle at the end of May. Shasta had said that we would spend the day watching a three-part documentary called The Burning Times. Profoundly moving, this film traced the history of the centuries of atrocities against women. I've seen The Burning Times. As we watched the beauty, loss, and pain of the films, our group of women sat on the floor on blankets holding one another for comfort. Many wept silent tears, and two of the women sobbed openly. When the films were over, none of us could speak. Shasta brought us chamomile tea and ginger snaps like a mother hen helping her chicks convalesce. She gave us time to let this hidden chapter of human's history sink in, and then she began to speak. During the church's persecution of women in the Middle Ages, the archetype that we once knew of the sagely queen or the wise grandmother was dramatically changed by the patriarchy. The original triple goddess was the maiden, the mother, and the matriarch, the empress in the tarot deck. 
This is the partner of the emperor, the king and queen who can rule their people wisely. Yet during the burning times, women's rights evaporated. They had no legal rights to own their land, even when their husbands had died. So women who outlived their husbands and whose sons had been killed in battle were turned out of their houses and their lands forfeited to the church. This not only overturned the old ways that had once honored women's property rights, but it became a form of property seizure by the church fathers, who were intent upon accumulating as much wealth and power as possible. Sounds very similar to what's going on with the deep state. You will own nothing and you will be happy. Are you guys really starting to see how evil the church is? The church is not. The God of the church is not source God. It's Lucifer. I really hope people start. The more people can see this, the quicker we can move into a new timeline. The, the God of the church is Lucifer. The God of the Bible is Lucifer. The God of this world has been Lucifer. Not the true God. Having nowhere else to go, these outcast women lived in caves and forests, ecking out a living from their knowledge of medical plants. They ate fruits and berries and roots, and food brought to by their clients in lieu of payment. These women were later depicted as crones by the church, carrying brittle sticks of firewood to their fires. This became the archetype of the discarded hag who no longer had a value to men because she was past her breeding years. And as we have seen, the crone of herbal wisdom was then converted into the witch. Shasta looked around the circle at our faces. We all wore a look of pain for the unacknowledged men and women who had paid the price of this disenfranchisement. She went on. Even the word crone derives from patriarchy. It comes from Kronos, the male ruler of the gods, the lord of linear time. Yet this name has nothing to do with the circular nature of the goddess, the one who is both within creation and also outside of it. She is the one who reminds us of the eternal now. We nodded in silence. Linear time is masculine, a straight line. Goddess time is circular and encompasses all of the seasons of life. We all took a deep breath, which I have said in the sun salutations, Surya Namaskar at the beginning of the Ashtanga practice, Surya Namaskar A is the masculine because it goes very linear. Surya Namaskar B is the feminine because we get the hips involved. We start to go circular. They both exist together, each, each countering the other one and partnering with the other one. Then Shasta stood up, clapping her hands. All right, you have seen the film, you have heard the stories, and many of you have lived through these tragedies in your past incarnations. But now it is time for a change. While many of our sisters are still enslaved by the patriarchal system around the world, we must give thanks for the things that we have changed here in our own country. We must take the time to celebrate the victories of today and the men and women who have made them possible. Look around you. You are moving into a new age of awakening where there are many wonderful men who support this vision of true partnership and equality. There are husbands and wives who work and play together as equals. There are men who change diapers and babysit and women who have careers. Lawmakers are petitioning for equal pay and women have found their way back into medicine, law, healing, science, and teaching once again. They are using their voices to help make the world a better place once more. We all nodded slowly, giving silent thanks that we have lived in a country where things were better than they were for our Muslim sisters and bro brothers. I reflected on what I had learned about the partnership model created by Yahshua and Magdalene and how different the world would have been if the church had only allowed these teachings to be heard. But even today, Vatican leaders are still arguing about whether male priests should marry or whether women should be allowed to be priests. It didn't seem as if they had matured much in their understanding of Yahshua's true message. Rather, they seemed intent on clinging to their outdated chauvinistic ways. Yes, because the church doesn't worship Yahshua. Or what Yahshua actually should never be worshipped because he was a teacher. The church changed Yahshua's name to Jesus. Jesus was not his name. The J did not even exist back then. So why did they change his name to Jesus? Why did they turn his story into Mithra's story? Yahshua was never crucified. 
So the church, Catholic and Protestant, both are not interested in teaching you the true teachings of Yahshua because they're Luciferian. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. The church is the biggest infiltrator of them all. Shasta continued to speak. We can make a difference in the world, whether we are men or women. We can stop competing with one another. We can stop competing with one another for men, for jobs, for recognition, and for beauty. We can celebrate our differences and support one another, teaching others to embrace a cooperative model of sharing instead of a competitive one. If we can find a better way of being friends and allies, perhaps we can teach that approach to our men and help them also find a way back to unity and partnership. This will create a better world for everyone. Some of the women were nodding. Meg blew her nose loudly and we all laughed. Shasta went on. It is my hope that each of you will find a way to bring healing back to our planet, one decision at a time. How you do it will be unique to each of you, but today we make the first step by discovering who your spiritual allies will be. She looked around the circle. Today, you choose your first goddess. We all began to whisper, were we going to choose a goddess? Really? What did this mean? How would it impact our lives? Shasta stood up. All right, let's go into the garden and do some ceremony. We scrambled to our feet, grateful for the change. We made our way out the back door and down the stairs, moving into the sunlit garden. Suddenly, I could feel the sun on my face and the breeze on the, of the perfect spring day. Yes, we were here in the world of light and shadows, but there was love in the world and beauty too, as well as horror and sadness. We gathered at the lowest point of the garden around the medicine circle. I stood in the north with Sophia, Mahat, and white buffalo calf woman at my back. To my left was the Eastern Gate and the statues of Mary, Kuan Yin, and Isis. I felt grateful for their soothing presence. And now, Shasta explained, I will call in the seven directions and summon the powers to join our circle, so pay attention. She turned her body to face the east and a group turned with her. She raised her arms and her voice took on a new resonance as she began the invocation. Spirits of the Golden East, we call you now into our circle and we ask that you hear our prayers. Guardians of the glorious sun, place a new beginnings as we summon now the sweet goddess of compassion to aid us in our journey. We call upon Mary, Kuan Yin, and Isis, Lady of a Thousand Faces, and beloved Mary of the Chalice, Magdalene to come into our circle now and grace us with your light. Hail guardians of the Eastern gate. The energy of the circle had suddenly shifted. I could feel the invisible presence of love moving through it. It was as if a holy wind had blown over the group, quickening everything. A shiver went up my spine. Suddenly the robin started to sing and the entire grove came alive as the divinities entered. Shasta swiveled next to face the southern altar, raising her arms in salute. Spirits of the faithful south, Gaia, turtle mother, grandmothers of the earth, we thank you for our food, our homes, and the clothing on our back. Join us, hail, Demeter of the harvest and Diana of the animals. Hail, many-breasted mothers and goddesses of the seas. Join us in the sacred circle, guardians of the southern gate. We turn to the west as one. The power of invocation electrifying. Hail powers of the Western Gate and places of hidden mysteries. Come Shekmet, Athena, and Inyana, warrior goddess of the sacred West. Come Magdalene of the Holy Chalice and bring the wisdom of the Black Madonna to aid us in the ceremony. We call upon your courage and your strength. It is time to reclaim that ancient wisdom and to end the fear and oppression and ignorance of the light and the balance and love might now return to the world. We turned to face the north as we were all just one entity. Shasta raised her arms. Welcome powers of the great white north, the council of the sages. For all the wise ones who have come before us, all the sages whose spirits still live, we ask for your guidance that we might learn from you. Hail teachers from the halls of wisdom at Sophia and white buffalo calf woman. Hail white wolf woman who teaches us the strange powers of the north. Now Shasta turned inward to face the circle and we joined her. She lifted her chin to the sky and she called down the powers of a, from above. 
Come, angels of the celestial skies, come, Newt and Hathor of the great star nations, who love humanity and help us grow. Goddesses of the eternal stars, inspire us so that we might stand united beneath the canopy of your splendor. The energy had risen to a crescendo. I could feel these vast energies stretching above us like the great shelter of protection. Shasta's hand went down to the earth, her palm flattened as if she were connecting with the ground. Listen, powers of the great below, we are speaking to you. Ground us now so that we might walk with humanity and connect with the sacred earth, the earth who has seen all ages move across and whose heart beats inside our own. Without the earth's mother grace, we would not be here. I felt a deep snowless move in my heart and I realized that the entire group had knitted itself together in a web of intention. The deep throbbing pulse of the earth moved through us. At last, Shasta placed a hand upon her heart and closed her eyes. We joined her in reverence. We honor now the sacred center, the spring of endless life. Come lady of the healing waters, come Isis of the holy center, come spider woman who joins all things in sacred union within our hearts and minds. Come lady of the silver lake and weave our circle together with light. A hum of electricity, energy sang through us, vibrating the columns stretching between heaven and earth. I felt the presence of many celestial beings enveloping us with love. The goddess chooses us. The directions had been called and the circle was established. Shasta reached down and picked up a large scalloped seashell from the center of the circle. Inside were slips of paper. It is now time to draw your first goddess. She said, passing the bulb to the left. Meg took it. See what the goddess has in store for you. The women's faces were apprehensive now as the bowl made its way around the circle. One by one, we pulled a selection from the open shell. When it was my turn, I pulled out a folded strip of paper and passed the shell on. Finally, the shell returned to Shasta. There are many goddesses in the universe and many expressions of women, Shasta said. Let's see now who has chosen you, Meg. You may begin. I could tell how nervous we all were. Delicate little Meg opened up her slip of paper. Lakshmi, she whispered, Hindu goddess of abundance. Perfect. Meg was raising funds in Washington to help single women and children survive. I could tell she was happy. But I do have to correct you there, Trisha McCannon. Lakshmi is not the goddess of wealth. When we say abundance, she's the goddess of spiritual abundance. That's a big no-no in the Hindu tradition. Lakshmi is not going to bring you material wealth. She brings you spiritual wealth. Sarah was next. She opened up her bag and read, White Shell Woman, Goddess of the Oceans. Ah, she had gotten Aphrodite, the goddess of love. I wondered what would happen in her love life. Claudia's voice quivered a little as she read, Timat, the chaos dragon at the beginning of time. Holy smokes, this primordial energy was associated with the rebirth of one's entire life. I couldn't even imagine what would happen to her. Emerald was next. The full-figured legal secretary read out bravely, Kali, the mother of transformation. Kali was the female counterpart to Shiva, the lord of transformation, a virtual powerhouse that seemed to totally suit Emerald. Not necessarily true, but Meg, or Trisha McCannon, if we ever get to meet, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about where you might be going astray with some of these Hindu, Hindu goddesses and gods. Kali is also associated with Mother Mary, or Almamari, which is her real name, and Isis. Slender Alexis came next. Diana, goddess of the hunt, she read. Protectress of animals and women. Fabulous. Alex was very much like Diana, trim, athletic, and strong. Susan was next. She raised her chin and read, Cybele, mother goddess of Rome. I knew very little about her, but I did know that there were a black stone of Kaaba, or meteorite, associated with her that the Romans used to worship. Just as today the Muslims honor the black meteorite in their mosque in Jerusalem, the Dome of the Rock paintings of Cybele showed her riding a chariot pulled by lions. That was definitely cool. Donna opened her paper. Demeter, goddess of the harvest. Incredible. Donna was the epitome of the sweet motherly woman. She even reminded me of Demeter. Sharon was next. She opened her slip of paper and read uncertainly. Emiratsu, Japanese goddess of renewal. Hmm. Wasn't one of Amaratsu's sim symbols the life-giving sun? It was my turn now and my heart was thumping in my chest. I opened my slip of paper and read Ishtar, Queen of Heaven and Earth. 
Ishtar of all the goddesses. She had been there from the beginning, and the story of her journey into the underworld in search of Tammuz had moved me greatly. I brought my attention back to the group just as Shasta was speaking. All right, your new assignment is to find out everything you can about this goddess. Remember that she has come with you with a very important message, and you will know why she has chosen you once you have integrated her story into your own life. We will reconvene on the summer solstice in three weeks' time, and you will each share what you have learned. Over the next few months, you will also prepare a ceremony to honor your goddess. That is enough for today. <laughs>